Hi, my name is Andrew Warburts and I'm the Property Advisor. Thank you for looking at this really educational video that is going to show you how to turn negative, and here I'm talking about negative cash flow, into positive in your portfolio. This is all part of the series of how do you get yourself $250,000 over the next five years. If you're interested in doing that, if you're interested in taking a really serious look at your finances, you're done with gimmicks, you're done with get rich quick schemes, you want math, you want something that mathematically cannot lie, then you're watching the right video. Please take a second and subscribe and I'll keep you informed video by video. And three or four times a week, we're gonna come out and give you some more keys, how you can use math and facts in real estate to create wealth. Let's get into this. How do you create wealth and turn what we call in the business negative cash flow into a positive thing? And that's most often an issue in the first few years of owning a property if you have negative cash flow. Now, let me say this. When I go to buy a property, I have certain formula that I'll follow that you will find in, in videos uh, later on that when you subscribe, you get uh, access to. I use formulas to minimize negative cash flow or create positive cash flow. And there are techniques of doing that aside from just putting a ton of money down. But right now I want to look at a question that several of you have asked through uh, YouTube. What if I have negative cash flow, Andrew? Let's have a look at it. So what we're going to look at is the same thing again. We're going to look at a $400,000 investment where you put 10% down. Now I want to just say the caveat. We're in the middle of COVID right now. In the middle of COVID, some of the 10% down investment programs have gone away and they're now asking 15%. But trust me, I see in my email every day, lenders moving back towards 10% down for an investment property. We've also discussed whether you buy it on your own or you buy it with partners. But now let's just look at the math, then you decide how to break it down. A $400,000 property, $360,000 is your loan balance. That's 10% down. This is how your payment breaks down. Principal and interest on that loan is about $1,719 a month. That's at 4%, by the way. And it's possible to obtain a lower interest rate. 2021, we're expecting lower interest rates. The insurance is about $75 a month. Property tax, about $350 a month, giving you $2,144 on your payment. Now, what if you could only rent that property for $1,944? Now, I know right now properties in this scenario because it's record low interest rates. I know where you can get this kind of property and get $2,200, $2,300 a month rent. But I just want, for the purpose of mathematics, to look at it. What happens if you have negative cash flow? Let's say you can only get $1,944. You now have $200 a month negative cash flow. What do you do about that? How do you approach that? All right, stay with me. How can you turn that negative into a positive? And it's so interesting, I'm gonna talk about this in my next video. A lot of us are more than happy to spend several hundred dollars a month on eating out, several hundred dollars a month on an extra car, on ATVs, on dune buggies, on some sort of extravagance, but the idea of spending $200 a month to make $100,000 is somehow alien in our mind. So let's focus on our, our minds on creating wealth Okay, and you'll have a lot more fun that way, I assure you. So again, at the beginning, we've got a $400,000 purchase, a $360,000 note. Okay, so let's have a look at this. The first piece of advice that I would give you is when you're going to buy a property like this, that you create a reserve account. So whether you buy with partners or you buy a loan, create a reserve account. And you're going to do that one of two ways. Let's say your down payment is $40,000 at the beginning. I want to advise you to take an additional 10% of that $40,000 and put it in an emergency account. $4,000. Do it at the beginning. Man up. Take 40 grand plus four. Put 4,000 in a reserve account. Open it at your local bank and call it 123 Main Street Reserve. That's the name of the account. You buy another property, 123 Victoria Street Reserve Account. Keep those reserve accounts. The second thing is don't just fund it at the beginning, but each month, yeah, each month, take an extra hundred bucks or even $50, but I recommend a hundred dollars. Take an extra hundred dollars. You're going to add it on here and put that hundred dollars into your reserve account. That's there in case you have a vacancy. 
that you've got a couple of months payments covered in case you have the air conditioning break, you need a roofing repair, you need a new water heater. You don't go into panic at that time because that's why people sell properties prematurely. Remember, all of this is based on the mathematics of amortization. We're all gamblers, it seems, in America, where we just, oh, I've got to buy it so low and I'm going to wait another 10 years and then I'm going to sell it really, really high and then you miss it so you wait another 10 years. Let me make this point. You've only got about four 10-year cycles in your life where this works because 20, 22, 25, we're too busy partying. You're not thinking about this. Somewhere around 30, you release some of your idealism and you realize the whole world isn't going to pay your bills. You've got to set it up for yourself. you got your 30s to 40s. Then you got your 40s to 50s. By the time 55 comes up, you're ready to retire. So don't tell me you're going to wait 10 years. You just wasted one third of your total investment period of your life. Doesn't make any sense. So how do you make it work every year of your life? Mathematics. And amortization is mathematics. Look back at my amortization video and you'll understand what I'm saying. So again, advice, create reserves. Now, I want to have a look at the math with you and what happens if you have, let's say, $300 a month negative on this property. Is that negative or is it positive? What do you think? Now, I'll tell you one thing is for sure. If you lay out that $300 a month, I guarantee at least 75% of people watching this video, that $300 a month will disappear. It'll disappear on a vacation. It'll disappear on an ATV. It'll disappear <clears throat> on clothes. It'll disappear on some sort of luxury you really don't need that's going to depreciate. It will be gone. But look what happens if you commit to that $300 a month and project it out. And I'm going to show you this now. So after five years of this 4% loan, making your payment right here every month, here's your payment right down to here. You're making that every month. After five years, look what happens. Your loan balance, which was not 400, but 360, has now dropped down to 325,000. That's what's called amor, to death. You're putting that loan to death. You're getting rid of the loan, and that's how your payments work. You have here gained another $35,000 equity. Plus, of course, you have your $40,000 that you put down at the beginning, giving you a total of $75,000. But you have $35,000 in equity after five years. If you take $300 a month times 12, that's $3,600 a year. After five years, that's $18,000. But instead of $18,000 that you've laid out for your negative, you now have $35,000. So you've turned 18 and doubled it to $35,000. And this money, you wouldn't even have it. Now you have it. You have $35,000 equity. You got 75 grand equity because of your 40,000 that you put down originally. Now, you can add another element. If you take appreciation at 3% a year, which is very conservative, you've got years that go down, years that go up, our purpose is to hold this property for 20 years and pay it off. Whether the market goes up or down, you just keep using the math. At 3% appreciation after five years, this home has gained $64,000 in appreciation. That's at 3% a year. Do the math. Three times four is 12, 12 grand a year. Over five years, 60,000. Plus interest on interest, 64,000. Look at your total equity. 64 plus 35 is $99,000. And you can add in your 40, you're at $139,000. Just because you're willing to man up and pay 300 bucks a month, and you got together and put together this down payment, which if you look at the last video, I tell you how to do that as well. Now have a look at what happens after 10 years. After 10 years, this 360 loan balance drops off to 300, and, excuse me, drops off to 283,000. So again, your loan balance is now 283,000. It was 360, you've now created another $77,000 in equity. $77,000 in equity, Based on 300 a month, you put out 36,000 total over 10 years. That's 3,600 times 10. 
but you've gained 77, you've doubled your money again. Was it worth it? Putting out $300 a month after 10 years to have 77,000 in equity, but there's more. Because that home appreciating at 3% a year, you've got $137,000 appreciation. That 400 will be roughly 537K. And I see it all over the place in California. If you're in a part of the country, you don't have that kind of appreciation, that's okay. Because the math of amortization works. That $77,000 is yours. In California, in Florida, many other places, in Nevada, in Arizona, you see this kind of appreciation. So now you've got this $137,000 here. You've got $77,000 here. Your total equity is one thirty-seven plus 77. It's $214,000. Now I want to ask you, is it worth paying $300 a month to arrive at 214,000. Be conservative. Let's say you have no appreciation of the property. You just have the 77K plus the 40K down you have, you've got 117K after 10 years for doing $300 a month. Let me ask you this question. If somebody came to you and said, give me 300 bucks a month and 10 years from now, I'll give you $120,000, would you do it? Yes, but why don't we do it? Because we're not educated. We're not educated in money. We're not educated in how to do this. And how many of you will have watched this video all the way through and then get up, call in your spouse and say, I want to do this. I want to make the money. One closing thought. Watch this. What's a five-year projection of the negative per month against principal per month? Watch this. At the beginning of your loan process, your principal per month in year one the amount of principal you pay per month is $519. So out of your 1719, 519 is to principal, but you're paying 300 a month negative. So even if you pay 300 negative, you're paying 519 in principal, you're almost doubling your money. It's 1.7 times your money from day one. And by the fifth year, the amount of principal you're paying down a month is $633. So even if you're still paying principal, you're doubling it because you're at $633 instead of $300. And finally, by year 10, that goes up to $733. Why would you not pay $300 a month to get $733 a month? Why would you not pay $300 a month to get $633 a month? There's no reason. Put your comments down below. I'll come back to you. Start creating wealth. Thanks for watching The Property Advisor.